and welcome back to DIY renovations and interior design with me Meg Coates. Today's video is five ways you can update your home on a budget. Now if you've been following my story, we have bought a 1940s attached bungalow. We basically need to add value to it before we can borrow more money to get like the big stuff done. So we're doing a lot of it ourselves and I think I am pretty equipped in little tips and tricks on ways to make the house look nicer uh, on a budget. So I'm gonna crack it off with the first one, which I think is one of my most successful ones so far. And literally that is, it doesn't matter what your kitchen cupboards look like, you can paint them and make them look better. Because I know not all kitchen cupboards are actually nice. They might be a horrible colour and they might be just horrible cupboards as well. But there are things that you can do. You could maybe paint them in a black so that you can kind of hide how ugly they are. We've painted ours black. They're actually quite nice kitchen cabinets, but they were like a mint green, which I don't mind mint green, but you could tell that they were old. They either needed thorough cleaning or or a paint and I wanted a black kitchen so I thought I would go far on ball in eggshell to do here I've seen some people they literally use a heat gun and they take off the vinyl layer that the manufacturers put on and paint the MDF which is a really good way to to make sure that you won't get any chips and things like that because you are painting on to like raw MDF so it will retain its color or the way I did it I didn't want to do that just in case there was glue or it was just, I just didn't want to make it worse than it already was. So I used this primer, Zinsa Bin, I think that's how you pronounce it. It is amazing. I've actually used it on a lot of Ikea furniture that's laminated. Um, it does, it can chip after a while, but one thing I've learned is you need to use the primer then you need to use a good paint. So if you use Faro and Ball, for example, they're obviously a really good paint company and that's who we use in eggshell. You would need to make sure that it's eggshell. I know that matte is kind of like in fashion, but in the kitchen, I just feel like matte doesn't really work. It's not practical. If you get a bit of ketchup on a matte cabinet that's painted and you start rubbing it off, it's, it's gonna come off. So I would recommend eggshell always. And then I haven't actually done the third coat on my kitchen yet, so I haven't done this step and it's showing because it is starting to chip in a couple of little places. But after the paint, you need to seal it. I have been looking on the market for a good sealer and I, I think I might go for this one. I, you have to seal it because I feel like it would be kind of like, I've, I've worked with a lot of spray paint before when I was working, um, when I was making products for my online store, I was making, I had to prime paint and if I didn't seal, I was going to get a lot of returns because it will chip. So yes, primer with a good primer since a bin, paint with a good paint, Lick, Faro and Ball, Rust-Oleum, um, all these brands are, are, are good enough. But then the final thing is to seal it. And then as well, I went on Amazon and I got 20, 20 handles for 13 pounds, or it could have been 14 pounds. And this has transformed it in the kitchen. I think, honestly, that kitchen is probably about 20 years old and I don't think we're gonna need to change it for a while. It's actually looking much, I lived in a new build before and I think this kitchen is much nicer than the new build one I had before. The second point seems quite obvious, but sometimes when you are stuck in your own home and you might have recently painted or you haven't painted for a long time or it feels overwhelming to paint, the second point is literally just look at the colours on your wall. Could you paint your room and refresh it completely? Even so, is your is your house brand new and all your walls are white and you're thinking, I, I want to add a bit of character, I want to add a bit of warmth, maybe paint it off white just to, to be safe in case you don't like it. Um, I, I, the good thing about paint is you can just paint over it. So I do think that painting your walls will increase the luxuriousness of your space very easily and very cost effective. You can grab a tub of deluxe paint from any B&Q store for you know under 20 quid. You can even go to like your local decorating center. They might have um, ones with like a bust lid, but are still good enough to be used on the walls and you might be able to get those cheaper somewhere else. So yeah. Sounds basic, but honestly, give your walls a lick of paint. Even if you go the same color, 
just giving it that refresh, that, that yeah, newness. So if you've got white walls and you haven't painted them for about two years, honestly, try and give them another, another lick of white paint because I think they recommend to paint every two years because obviously, you know, the colours can fade and get dirty and things can start to look a little bit scruffy. So do so if you can. Okay, and a massive trend that's coming back. And that's one thing I want to say is I've seen people going, oh, when is this trend going to go out of fashion? On about panelling. Now, panelling has been a thing for centuries. Like, it is not a new trend. The new trend is doing it with cheap alternative methods. That's kind of like where this trend has come from. So back in Victorian times, panelling would be made with wood, it would be one massive sheet of panelling rather than just being stuck onto the wall. It's a lot more expensive and this would um, ooze luxurious and glamour and yeah, expensive taste. And now there are much better, well not better, but there's more affordable materials out there such as MDF or plywood and you can panel your walls with these materials. Or you could do your dado rails and your picture rails with affordable wood from places like B&Q or Rumix. So I'm going to be doing a video with them soon. Um, and yeah, they basically send you everything you need and they calculate all the wood you need and they send you the wood as well. It's literally a lifesaver. So have a look at them, but also you can go to yeah, B&Q, Wix, have a look online at different wood places as well. And it is so easy. Uh, if you are somebody who changes their mind a lot, maybe because I know I am and I've, I've put all my panelling on the walls with glue. But if you don't want to use glue, you can grab a pretty affordable nail gun from any home DIY store and you can pop your panelling on with that. And then where the nail's gone through, you just literally fill it over with a bit of filler and sand it off and then paint. And it makes such a difference. I think we did, um, in our old house, we did this hallway and it cost us like 60 quid. And honestly, every time I walked in, I was like, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. It made me happy. And I feel like if you can love where you are, the space you're in, you will live a better, fulfilled, happy life. Okay, so my fourth point is to have a look at different vinyl peel and stick options. This could be from tiles, this could be from flooring, this could be to update a piece of furniture. So I'll pop a photo of a couple of different things that I have done with vinyl. So I have updated a piece of Ikea furniture with this wooden wooden vinyl. I also used peel and stick tiles in my old house in the kitchen, as you can see here. I follow this amazing company on Instagram, I think she's just a girl who, on her own, like well, well she started it up anyway, it's called Jess Rose Vinyl, and go on there and you see some of the amazing things that people are doing, they're you know, covering up their fireplaces, they're doing loads of different things with vinyl, and it really does add such an amazing touch to a space. And I've also seen people using that Jess Rose vinyl on their floors. So if you've got a space that isn't too high traffic, maybe like a utility room or a, or a, a downstairs toilet that you know you don't get that many people walking on, definitely try the vinyl just to give it a good cover up. And it's really inexpensive, cost effective way of, of trialing new styles. And good things about uh, the peel and stick is if you go off it in a few years, you just peel it off and you could buy another one and stick that down again. So it's really versatile and really easy to manage as well, which is something that I love because I always change my mind. Always, you know, I'm a bit of a sucker for the home interior trends, so I'm always kind of changing my mind, and that is a great way to be able to do so. And I've recently just upcycled my um, budget friendly coffee table with some DC fix from B&Q, and I definitely think that it looks a lot better and looks amazing in my opinion. I love it, uh, yeah, and that again is using that sticky back plastic DC fix vinyl peel go get some as well. That that roll for my coffee table cost me, I think it was £6.50. Saves me buying a real piece of marble, eh? Okay, I know two of these already have been painting options, but I wanna make emphasis, I wanna emphasize like how much just painting something really makes a difference. So my final point is consider if you're bored of your house, it's all white, you're just like, I just wanna add some 
pizzazz to my home. I just wanted to look a little bit more like interior, me, like my style. Then consider painting your walls, as I previously said, your kitchen cupboards, as I previously said, and some furniture. But things that you don't usually think of, like radiators, your doors. Like we've painted our, um, we were gonna buy, we were gonna spend thousands on new radiators and I was like, oh, but they work, they're just ugly. So I painted them all black and I absolutely love them black. I'm honestly thinking like, do we actually need new radiators? Because I like these black ones. And I feel like if I bought new ones, I'd probably go for white and I won't like them as much and I won't want to paint brand new radiators. So I'm enjoying the old black ones. And the same with my doors. I've kept all the original doors and yes, they were ugly before, but I've painted them black and they honestly look so expensive and they look really nice and I'm keeping the original doors and not wasting um, money buying new ones and like popping those in the skip. So yeah, preserving things that are a bit old, definitely paint your radiators. If your radiators aren't at least 10 years old, they're probably starting to look a bit drab. Even if you just paint them white, again, give them that liquor paint, make them look, but I would avoid using gloss paint because obviously it goes yellow and then you'll have to paint it a little bit more often. But this is the paint that I used and I used it in matte black, um, but I've also used it in white in my mum and dad's house when I painted their tiles. And then this is one that I haven't done, but I'm really tempted to, is like paint your skirting boards a different colour, go wild. So um, as well, look at your skirting boards, do they need replacing? This is something that you can do yourself. We've recently installed plastic skirting boards into our home and yeah you're probably thinking ew but honestly they are six inch they look victorian they match the rest of the house they are plastic i will never have to paint them ever to do this whole room it did cost 70 pound to do so and um, but you can do it yourself so i ripped the old ones well we ripped the old ones off and then we glued the new ones onto the wall and then you put coke at the bottom coke at the bottom at the top and yeah they look brilliant as long as you've got like a mitre saw or something to cut the angles that can really update your space as well and i think all of these methods are under 100 pounds even the skirting boards being replaced they cost us under 100 pounds so definitely take a look at these tips and tricks i'm really excited to see what you guys do let me know in the comments if you are thinking about any of these um, and i'm happy to share my experiences on any of them as well so yeah i hope you enjoyed that video um if you want to see more of these i can dive deeper into sort of each area like how to really update your kitchen or your bedroom or furniture for less uh, let me know in the comments if any of these you'd like to see and i can get cracking with them for you so i'll leave that there if you like this video please like and subscribe or um whatever leave a comment let me know it really does help me understand um because this is a fairly new channel where I'm going with this and if you are enjoying it. Um, and yeah, I hope you have an amazing day.